finally a little bit of sunshine. Oh my, it's been a long time now. I almost forgot how it looked. Oh, there come two of my kitty crew. Come on over, guys and girls. Speedy. Spook, you linking like a big old panther. Yep, here they come. There's my little princess. Speedy. Come on, baby. Come on over. See Papa. Yeah. <laughs> you saw that camera out? You had to come over and make an appearance, didn't you? Got that tail up. Looking good, baby. Looking good. Spooky. You just gonna link on over, aren't you? Yep. Were you over visiting with Mrs. Davis? No, well, that's okay. I don't think she minds. Oh, finally got a little sunshine, didn't we? It ain't gonna last for long. Trust me, it ain't. So, howdy, y'all. And it's been a while. And uh, we're out here in the yard today. Taking advantage of one of the rare times we've had. In quite some time. Well, since last Monday. Late afternoon. Because all we've had is constant rain. And even when it wasn't a deluge, which it has been quite often, we've just had a low, slow drizzle. And rarely has it even stopped for any length of time. So things are soggy. There ain't no yard mowing going on, even though I need to. Yep. And we haven't been able to get out here, take a look at our little garden that we got, or anything, except just for a few minutes, in between dodging raindrops. So I thought today, since uh, right now at the moment, and it's about one in the afternoon, we got a little bit of sun peeking out, partly cloudy skies, I'd check and see how things were doing. No, I was out this morning, even though it was still drizzling, checking on things. And over the course of the last seven days, you know, I spent a few minutes out here in between rain showers and during some of the lower moments trying to check on things. But it's been a soggy, wet mess for sure here in the southeast. Let's take a look at our little uh, side garden plant we got over by the driveway. See how it's faring after seven days of almost constant rain. So here we are. And uh, I'm so proud that sun's shining. Woo! Well, at least that squash plant right there is loving all this here uh, rainfall. She's really been blowing it out. Our little three corn stalks here and are leaning a little bit. They seem to have enjoyed it. Spooky. You here with Papa? But we take a look at our little uh, green bell pepper here. She's got some blossoms on her. And she has been blossoming. Got some peppers forming up in there. But at times, the rain was so hard, you couldn't even hear yourself in the house. You couldn't even see out the windows. And you'll see right here some of what the problem is. It was so hard that these here leaves that have been damaged by, yep, caterpillars and hoppers, grasshoppers, have been knocked off. But also, some of what would have been peppers has also been knocked off. And I think maybe we got some hail. And that contributed to the leaf loss on that pepper, as well as some damage in the holes in this squash plant right here. And then the rain was so intense, knocked over my heat master tomato. Sure did. But it also stripped the blossoms off of it. There's one right there. Another one right there. 
and there's more on the ground yep need to get that staked up and see if we can save her we'll have to try now the green beans other than a few holes from uh, the continuing attack of army worms and we've got a new worm that I'm gonna be showing you today yep and that's got to do with these here two uh, better boy bush tomatoes right here which overall up here in the top are still looking pretty good but let me show you something right here see right there see that there dark green a little round yep little balls of poo poo yep that could be from army worms that could be from horn worms or as I'm gonna show you oh yeah we got a whole another worm that's invaded our place let me see if I can find one of them again he was here somewhere oh there he is right there you see him right there you see that light green worm with a couple of uh, white stripes on top one on either side yeah let me show you what that is you might think that would be a uh, oh a hornworm yeah one of them tomato hornworms but you'd be wrong he ain't wanting to get off me you want to know what he is see how he's doing see how he arches up his back right there yeah remember the story of the inchworm yep these are called inchworms but they're also known as cabbage loper worms yeah they are they're not horn worms so we've had fall army worms and we have had a horn worm or two but now we're having these see how he does inches up like that and I'm gonna leave a link to a website so you can see that mr. Tom's telling you like it is and these are hard to find and I keep looking for them keep thinking I got them all and then more show up but he's got to go, I'm sorry. So close your eyes and understand he's going to Caterpillar Heaven. But yep, we've got them. We picked off several in the last day or two from these here uh, Better Boy Bush tomatoes. And that, and they're hard to find. But that's not been the only problem. Another problem is, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but you see those little uh, puckered up places on these leaves? Yeah. And you see how the leaves are curling? Yeah, they're curling in instead of out. So at first uh, thought, if you Google this, you're going to think you got tomato leaf curl. No. Made a leaf curl, the leaves fold up like this. And if it's drought stress, they also do that. What this is, when the leaves curl under like this, and this was more pronounced a day or two ago, and some of the older leaves are still tucked way under. See them? See how they curl? Yeah. That is excessive moisture and also could be excessive nitrogen and I'm sort of thinking I helped uh, 
the situation out a little bit. Yeah, we've had excessive moisture. Of that there ain't no doubt. Seven days of constant rain has definitely caused this problem. But I also know I've been pushing these plants with fertilizer. See right there? Where it almost looks like they're warded up. Yeah, that's called edema. Yeah, just like people get. Plants get too. And that's the result of the plant cannot. The plant cannot transpire the amount of moisture that it's uptaking. You can look all that up. But overall, they're still growing, and that will actually work its own way out as the rainfall continues to lessen should that happen. But you can see right there some more of that poop. And what I've been doing, weather permitting, I've been trying to find all them army worms, which I only found one. But I found quite a few. But now what is our new uh, pest? And that is cabbage lopers. And like I say, you can identify them by their light green. And uh, got those white stripes on top. Two of them and one on either side. And tomato hornworm doesn't. But you might say, well, Mr. Tom, if they're... Uh, Cabbage lopers, why are they on your tomatoes? Well, unfortunately, cabbage lopers, and that's why I'm going to leave the link in the description below the video, so you can see if they don't got cabbage or brassicas to munch on, oh, they'll start munching on other vegetables too. Number one up the bat is, of course, tomatoes. Here's a couple more of our spider lilies about the bloom. Some people call them naked ladies and I always have too. Until a few years back I was looking them up again and I found out they're actually uh, officially called spider lilies. Our green beans even though they're showing a little bit of heat stress now that sun's blasting down on them Trust me, the ground is not dry. Overall, and you can see them here turning. Their leaves. Now that, when they curl up like that, and the leaves roll in on top of themselves, that's just from uh, dealing with the blazing sun, see? And it'll burn them. I still haven't figured out what's going on with that. I mean, when I was out this morning, None of these were suffering. They were all looking fine. Now they're looking terrible. Maybe it's because they're so uh, tender and fragile right now, all pumped full of moisture. The sun comes out and just basically bakes them alive. And these are the things that you face here in uh, Deep South, and I'm sure anywhere else. And you can see down bottom of those tomatoes you know we got some leaves starting to yellow off and die of course I knew that was going to happen because we've been fighting that uh, blight late blight even though I knew know it's dead now and that the leaves will never recover they'll eventually die it's that top growth all looking nice and healthy that sort of gives me hope that they'll continue on if they do they do if they don't they don't this little squash plant's coming along. You can see the cucumbers there. Leaning over, looking a little bit pouty because the sun's been out. Blasting down on it again. Yeah. A little uh, corn stand over here. Yep, ain't looking too chipper either. It was almost all beat down into the ground. And then one of the real tragedies 
is these uh, cherry tomatoes over here and you can see a lot of the leaves are stripped clean off well that's because old Mr. Tom couldn't get out here and get all of the army worms and the cabbage lopers picked off before they had their way with it in fact all this happened in a period of one day see strip them right off now since then I think I have got all of them and see that's that word think you know and what you have to do is you got to leave no one leaf unturned yeah like the old saying leave no leaf un unturned yeah it's time consuming and it takes a while and you want to make sure see this one here is looking so healthy so vibrant yep and they got a lot of its leaves too they surely did now I could spray them with some BT you might wonder what that is well that is Bacillus thuringiensis, and it's actually a natural occurring bacterium and what that does is it actually makes the caterpillar sick they stop eating after some time and they die and I could also hit them with some spinosad which is also a natural occurring bacterium yeah and it actually acts as a neurotoxin and paralyzes the cucumber or not the cucumber <laughs> the caterpillar now currently I don't have no spinosad I do have some BT but I understand both those take some time to work so much has got to be ingested and here's the thing with it raining continuously and these these plants looked amazing prior to the rainfall starting last Monday late afternoon I would have just been pissing my money away because as soon as I put it on the rain would have washed it off and here in my little uh, caterpillar gel and I only did this for y'all try to get them uncovered here here we got some of the culprits you can see we got three of them cabbage lopers and if you look closely there's a brown one down in there too well that is a fall army worm so right now we got these in caterpillar prison they're being detained till we uh, consider what to do with them now this being YouTube rightfully I can't show you the full outcome you know but I'm thinking they're going to heaven real soon but we don't want them to escape So we'll just cover them back up that foil, leave them right there. Maybe they won't escape and cause any more damage. So that's the way of it. And that's what happens during uh, extreme weather events. Yeah. The tomatoes, they uptake excessive moisture that they can't deal with it. And then the leaves start to curl down start to look all uh, warded up now that will correct itself in time the leaves will flatten back out but here again it's another like I say another indication that could be excessive moisture now I know earlier today I found one of them worms Hiding out on one of these leaves. And that 
in the cocoon. And look at there, I found them again. See them right there? Yeah, and you don't want that to happen at all. He's already sleeping in his cocoon. And when he metamorphosizes, he'll become a moth. And guess what he'll do? Or she? Lay more eggs. Nope, don't want that. So we gotta get him on out of there. And of course, he ain't wanting to go peacefully. No, he isn't. Now we got him, see? He's asleep, but he's gonna be asleep forever. So that's why you gotta leave no leaf unturned. Oops, I dropped. Since there were some teaching moments in my little uh, south side garden bed there, things I already knew, but things some of you out there might not, I thought I'd share them with you today. Wow, you got a little sunshine. And I'll tell you this, if you stand out in it, it'll burn you straight down, just like in July and August. Why the plants? They're a plum pool of moisture. And uh, the beans, some of those leaves, will become brittle. They're basically steaming themselves alive, just like if I was cooking them. That's fact. Yep. So that's why I wanted to talk to y'all about the effects of extreme weather events. Here, it's been constant rainfall. Now, seven days and seven nights pretty much constant like i say if it even slowed down for a bit it was just a light drizzle very very few times did it stop raining totally but today and it ain't gonna last we got storms building right as i speak and more rains expected this afternoon throughout the evening and that you can only do what you can do and you can decide to throw money at it throw effort and time at it if you got it I'm retired I got more time and I have got soaking wet out here I'm trying to do what I can but at some point in time you gotta throw your hands up and just leave it in God's hands. You can see. Yeah. We got some blue. Some nice beautiful white clouds. But you can see them start to gray up. Coming in from the north. And from the west. Now I can tell you. As you look through that tree line right there. You can see them starting to build and grow higher and higher and we will have more rain before the sun goes down and that makes me think back in the days pioneering days you know how tough it was for our forefathers and mothers and that to make it through every year and hence why they put everything humanly possible up in their pantries and in the root cellars when the harvest and times were good. Yes, they did. Of course, they didn't depend on the things that all of us expect to be there every day. No, they didn't. You no, know, back then, it was more about you know, if you had animals, you cured your meat by smoking or preserving in salt. And that 
you hunted, you fished, you trapped, you planted your fields, and you'd eat things that we wouldn't even think about eating anymore. So what do I mean by all that? You know, I bought a couple of farms before that were very old. And on those places, there was always a corn crib. It just wasn't for the animals on the place. It was for the people too. And they didn't have freezers. And they didn't put up sweet corn. No. They put up what we now call field corn. Of course, they ain't always been called field corn. And that, they dried it in the fields. They picked every year. They carted it off in the horse-drawn wagons. Placed it in that corn crib up off the ground. And uh, made it where hopefully mice and rats couldn't get to it. They ground it for animal feed. But they also ate the corn in many ways. We haven't ate in 50 plus years. Dishes like parched corn. Uh, they made hominy. They ground it for corn meal. Yeah, they surely did. Corn flour. And that was a big staple in the South. Because back in the day, wheat just didn't grow here well. Varieties we had, they wouldn't make it. They'd be polluted up with blight, rust, and what have you. It'd just be a total waste of money and a waste of time. That's why in certain areas of um, the world and in America, cornbread was a way of life, not white bread. Yeah. Same way with Irish potatoes. Irish potatoes down this far south tended to have smaller crops, if any, because of potato blight. Yeah. Potato beetles. So, Southerners relied on sweet potatoes, which is actually related to the morning glory species than the actual white Irish potatoes. And if you look at America right now, our greatest uh, potato growing regions aren't in the south and southwest, not for white Irish potatoes. They're up in the northwest, you know, states like Idaho. You know, Idaho potatoes, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, Michigan. Oh, yeah. Even your northeast states. The further you get south, commercial production either gets so less it don't matter or it just isn't attempted. So, same way with rice. People up in the Midwest, upper Midwest, or middle Midwest, or northeastern tier states, east coast, they ain't growing no rice. That's grown in places like Southern California, Southern Texas, Southern Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. Yeah. Some in North Carolina. Yeah. Why? because it takes a certain climate and rainfall. And so the foods that we had and our forefathers had to get through the winters of life, which may not just be the winter that year, but that's why I call it the winters of life, the downturn, came from what they knew they could grow best in their areas and in their microclimates. And every time I plant, even though I don't plant much now, I look at what does well based on the conditions, weather, climate, temperature, precipitation, and what struggles. And I make notes. And see, I'm seeing right now, that right now, my tomatoes are struggling. Far too much rainfall which results in far too much disease pressure, insect pressure. And since there is too much rainfall, I can't deal with it. 
the same way with peppers. Now squash so far, they're thriving. But I do know the longer it stays constant rain, plus this high humidity. Oh, I got powdery mildew and downy mildew coming. And if I want to have squash, I have to deal with that. The beans, they're struggling because in between searing sun and excessive moisture, they're basically just cooking. So overall, 2021, depending on where you live, your area, your climate, microclimate even, it has been tough year or maybe impossible. And that's why. Every one of us, me, you, your family, friends, and loved ones should always keep a well-stocked pantry for at least, if you can get there, for one year. Just like our forefathers did before us. That's how we grew a nation, and that's how we kept from starving. And trust me, folks, it wasn't always fancy food. No. It was things like sweet potatoes, Irish potatoes, rice, beans, dried corn, oats, barley, rye, oh yeah, hearty foods, rutabagas, turnips, beets, yeah, even carrots. Things that could take you through the winter till the next harvest came around. And so if you're really wanting to grow next year, you might want to think about what you should be growing to survive the winters in your life. If I grow much next year, it'll be with that idea in mind. Growing what will get me through the winter of my life in 2022. Now, I can't do meat. Nope. I could probably get away with a few chickens. Pigs, cows, goats, sheep. That ain't going to happen. So, y'all, just a little short video today to show you where we were on one of those rare occasions after seven days where we have a little sunshine, the birds are out chirping, life is all good. Kitty Crew's all happy. Yeah. All is good. So until old Miss Tom, Speedy, Spooky, Cleo, which has been here today for morning breakfast, you know, Elrod, sometimes Magoo, and of course Grace, which is curled up behind the couch in the den on the windowsill currently sleeping see you on the next video y'all take care out there stay safe prepare as you must for what happens in your lives and may you be blessed by god as you bless others until we all see you on that next video goodbye for now Spooky, you out there cleaning up? <laughs> the sun's shining and you still in the shade. Okay, well, I'm gonna take her on in because you gotta be careful where you walk out in this yard or you'll sink up to your ankles. Maybe we'll start drying up some over the next few days so I can get this yard whip back into shape it's going to be a job of course it always is later on